Hi everyone, welcome back to the second part of my Chilean bullet journal setup for the month of June. If you haven't checked out the first part of it, I will leave a link in the description box to that so you can see what else I looked at before we start on this project here. So getting started on the first page of this part, which is the mind map. So everything else before this I covered in the last video. And now we're getting started on one of my favorite pages to work on, which is the mind map. And if you're not aware or you haven't been watching the channel um, as yet, my mind map is basically a page where I can put any information that doesn't have a proper place to go. Things I want to remember or ideas that come up or video ideas or, you know, home life things, just anything that needs to go in a note form and I don't have a proper place for it in the journal. So this one, I just keep one side of my spread blank and then I create an artwork on the left hand side or the right hand, whichever. But this time it's on the left and I like to choose a woman from the country that I'm visiting. So the woman I've chosen from Chile is a musician, singer, songwriter from Chile and her name is Mon Laferte which I was calling Mon Lafert for a while, but I did look it up. It's Mon Laferte, and she's just got such a cool look about her. She's Her persona, is, she's really well known for her persona that she has on stage. Her stage presence is um, very dynamic and interesting, and I felt that as soon as I saw photos of her and all the colors that she wears, that just the, her whole look and essence, I think, gives off the vibes that I wanted to show for Chile. Mon is also known for her ability to create songs in all different genres and her versatility as an artist. I found it interesting that earlier in her career, she was actually called Montserrat Bustamante. That was her original stage name. And then she developed thyroid cancer and sort of it kind of hindered her work life, obviously, as it would and impacted her whole life. So she felt like she wanted to start fresh as a new chapter after surviving the cancer and going through the treatments. And so then she referred to herself as Mon Laferte. So I thought that was really cool and interesting, um, giving herself this new lease of life after going through something so dramatic um, or traumatic, I should say. So yeah, I thought that was cool and I thought I'd let you know that little fact. So her original birth name was Norma and she was born in Vina del Mar in Chile. It sounds like she's lived and breathed music. Her grandmother was one of her first influencers who used to sing at clubs throughout Valparaiso. And then she actually started performing not long after she was 13 in Valparaiso and Santiago. Um, so her passion definitely goes a long time and she started by winning a guitar when she was nine in a singing contest. And then the last little interesting fact that I found out about her is that she's also a visual artist and she did an exhibition, a solo exhibition a couple of years ago at, uh, in Mexico City. So it's cool to see how um, creative this lady is and it definitely inspired me to be creative with the way I portrayed her in this. I didn't want to do just a straight up portrait of her. I kind of wanted to make it a little bit quirky and interesting. So I found a really nice image of her with her hand up over her face and then a lot of the photos of her had these extravagant floral arrangements in her hair so I thought that I would use the national flower of Chile which is the bell flower and put that cascading across her hair a little bit. Now I love to use washi tape wherever I can throughout my setups and on this page particularly it always seems to work out quite nicely as fabric so I've done her top in this gorgeous washi tape and I popped it in real time this time so you can actually see how I do that. Um, some people have asked how I do that so I thought I'd just do slow that down to show you the real time version rather than speeding it up and making it look like it happens in the blink of an eye. It is a bit time consuming, you have to be quite careful so you don't go ripping through the paper itself. Um, but it's always worth it. I love the end result of putting the washi tape on there, I just think it's so it's like there's just so much to it you've got the pops of gold and lots of intricate designs that to choose from and this particular one went quite nicely with the color theme that i had going on um, it wasn't exact but it sort of complemented it nicely and i loved the gold foil moons on there because i'm trying to make it a little bit celestial in the um, design of this page i just sort of add little sunshine elements where i can little moons where i can because um, mainly because i feel like this this design here I was trying to go for a really um, I guess like a boho sort of graphic 
look to it. And I'm loving this archway shape that I used in the last week's setup as well. Um, so I just wanted to keep playing with like designing it a little bit different than I would normally. So I had a lot of fun on this spread. And then I threw on some tattoos in um, marker on her arm, which were also relating to sunshine and moon. And then to color her in, I am just using my markers in a few colors, trying to keep to those same color uh, palette that we've been using. And then Very good. See, I did it. I copied the picture on this one. Oh my God, it looks exactly the same. Well done. <laughs> See, you did a great job. A, but mom. And then for the skin, I do like to add a little touch of realism. So I tried to do my best with the colored pencils. I really love having some realistic elements and then some more graphic parts. Um, or even abstract parts. I'm definitely opening my eyes to how I can make my portraits a little bit more interesting. So I'm really happy with how this particular piece turned out because I feel like it's interesting and it's got color. Um, and I think it looks like her. I mean, I don't really know her face that well, so it's hard to tell, but I think it looks like her. Um, if, you, if you're a fan of Mon Laferte out there and you've seen this, let me know, does it look like her? Um, and yeah, and then this page was finished and ready for me to fill in in the month of June. Turning over to work on the next page. Now these are my weeklies. So the weeklies I like to spread across a couple of drawings just to give me a little bit more of art moments, <laughs> which I love. Um, but what I do like to do is make some Dutch doors for the weeklies themselves. And I'm always trying to think outside the box and do something a little bit different so that one, I don't get too bored and also so that it's interesting for you guys as well because I do care what you guys think and I'm you know, trying to always explore new ideas. So if you saw my last few months of weekly setups, I've been trying to do a layered effect with my weeklies um, where I formed a picture and cut into each particular layer. And I still love that so much. I think it worked really well on the um, one for Amsterdam or one for the Netherlands. And then I did one for Ukraine that worked really nicely. Um, so I've really enjoyed doing, like exploring a little bit more with my weekly setups. And today is no different. So this time I slightly brought the weeklies up off the base, just for a little bit of interest. Um, I don't like slicing down the spine too much. So I tried to do as minimal as I could. Um, and then I prepared two to three, no, three weeks of the month on this spread. And then on the next spread is going to be the final two weeks. And then for the decorations on this page, I wanted to look at a very famous and celebrated Chilean poet called Pablo Neruda. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1971. He was one of the most influential and widely read poets of the 20th century. And his pen name, Pablo, actually was created by himself when he was a teenager because his father didn't want him to do poetry. So he hid his passionate writing behind that pen name and then later changed it legally to Pablo Neruda. Now I hadn't actually heard of Pablo Neruda before but that is not to say he wasn't incredibly famous because I don't know many poets at all. I've never really looked into poetry and I don't remember anything from school. <laughs> um, but yeah from what I looked into this is a really really nice man he seems um he was really interested in poetry about love and romance and describing them in quite emotive ways and i only read little blips of the poems that he has created but even i as someone who does not really get poetry and doesn't understand a lot of things with poetry um it was quite clear it was like beautifully written so i was yeah feeling pretty inspired and this guy from 
what I read other people write about him um, was just extremely creative and interesting. Like he would have parties, he would host parties and he would dress up for them. He'd put on a hat and draw on a moustache. So with his eccentricities, he also collected things and the homes, there's three homes in Chile that are available for tourists to go and have a look through. And they are now museums that hold pieces of his life, which I found really cool. So the houses that he had, they're not just houses, they're kind of pieces of him. And there's all these collectibles around it and it really sets the scene of what life was like for him in those spaces and they're super creative spaces so all the elements that I loved I tried to get onto this spread so some of the elements from one of the first houses which I looked at which is La Chascona um, that's based in Santiago and has beautiful like very surrealist looking interior decoration so most of the things that I draw here are from that house there because I found it so like just interesting. I would really love to live in a house that looked so like it reflects your personality. And I think that's what his house did. And that's probably why it's such a great tourist spot. So it's not only about him, but it's also just so interesting and different. Um, I loved all the colors. So I tried to use those in the spread as well. And then the other two houses, in case you're interested, are La Sebastiana. I have no idea how to say that one. That's in Valparaiso. And the last house is on the coast of El Quisco at a place called Casa de Isla Negra. I will leave a link to the article I read about these three homes. It was from the New York Times and it was written really nicely by this lady who had traveled there with her husband and she went to see all three places and it was just a really nice article. So I'll just leave that down below. Um, but yeah, if you also want to know more about the poet himself, he was also a diplomat and politician. He saved 2000 lives from Spain, bringing them over to Chile. Um, he fought for what he believed in and he spoke a lot about the history of Chile and how how he can help and people still use his poetry in protests and it's hard for me to repeat it all marches today that's how resounding his work was so his life is very interesting and I saw a really cool TED talk on him as well which I'll leave linked in the description box um, but yes so very creative guy and was perfect inspiration for this page I really loved this effect that I got on the top left corner drawing. It's like a wrought iron sunshine on the outside of La Chascona's house. And I liked that when I used my marker to just draw the wall in behind, this blue wall, to give it like a drop shadow of where that sign is, um, I just did an extra layer of that same marker. So if you're ever thinking that how can I get something to bounce off the page with your text maybe, try adding a second layer of marker beneath it as a shadow and I think it could be a really nice effect for your text to bounce off or your drawings, whichever you're doing. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you know that I'm just using markers on this page, trying to keep it all very graphic and simplistic and then also using some gel pens and one single paint pen around the edge for the border. And then just titling the days of the week and giving them numbers. And then this spread was complete. And finally moving on to the last spread of the setup for June and this one is the last two weeks for June and I wanted to kind of showcase a little bit more of the very lower tip of Chile which is right next to Argentina. I didn't realize how close Chile is to Antarctica so the very bottom tip of the country is the closest point to Antarctica. That's why it's the most common place for people going to Antarctica to start in Chile because it is the quickest flight. I think I read that it takes about two hours to get there from Punta Arenas down in the bottom of Chile. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show a little bit of that really cold, 
icy vibes that a lot of people travel to Chile to experience. So those glaciers and I really love the colors. And something that I came across is the Magellanic penguin, which are a South American penguin that breed down in the coastal regions of Patagonia. So I wanted to have a little penguin poking out of the top of one of my Dutch doors for the weeklies, but then almost set it into a Arctic looking scene. So I really wanted to have lots of blues and um, beautiful icy tones through this picture. And one thing I came across in my research was something that I definitely want to see in real life. It just looks amazing. Are the marble caves found in Chile. They are like bits of yellow and then blue and white and gray swirled all into one. It looks just amazing. And you can kind of go through on little canoes, on little boats underneath them. Um, I'll put some pictures on screen so you're not just listening to my weird description of them, but they were just so awesome and the colors were just so vibrant. It's unbelievable that they are natural. Um, and I just thought it would be the perfect little background for our little Mr. Penguin to be sitting in front of. They're not exactly down at the very tip of Chile, like down at the bottom, but they aren't far. They're still in the Patagonia region and they're right at the edge of the Andes. So it's just, I think it would just be such a cool thing to see in real life. And as I've just thought about that, I've just realized they're probably not blue as the, the rock is probably not blue. It's probably a reflection from the ocean beneath it, but I don't care. I still want to see them and I still think it would be amazing to look at them because of that reflection of the light giving it this beautiful blue appearance. So I'm sticking by it. Um, I want to go there. Even though from what I read, it is one tricky spot to get to. You have to do a massive trek through forests to get to the lake where it is and then travel across the lake um, on a canoe. And then once you're there, it is said to be the most spectacular cave system in the world. So I think it's worth the effort. These caves actually came around about 6,000 years ago. So the tunnels were sort of carved out by the natural water currents. So it was just so beautiful that it definitely inspired me and I had to get this into the setup somehow because what an amazing sight to see. And to illustrate this, I did use watercolor on this page. I was missing a bit of paint throughout. I used a lot of marker throughout this setup. So I thought I would just go back to my old faithfuls and use some watercolor. Just a couple of blues and one little, one little bit of yellow. Tried to use minimal water. And then once I was able to capture some of that nice flowing pattern through the marble, to give it a little bit of depth after, I went in with my Prismacolor pencils to just deepen some of the, um, the caves to make it look like they were sort of receding. And I'm really happy with this page and I love this little penguin that's just sitting on top. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to start using this setup. I really, really like it. So here's how this final page turned out, along with a look at the last few pages that we've set up. And then I'm going to make the selections for the next country that you guys can help me vote on. Now, what I wanted to explain in this video is that as you've probably noticed, I do go a little in depth into these, um, these country setups for each of my monthlies. So once again, I've fallen behind and I just want to get started. I'm about to create the next bullet journal ready for the second half of this year. And I want to go straight on to my next country. Now I felt really bad because last month when we voted on Chile, it was so closely followed by Malaysia. It was only like a, a couple of percent off of becoming the winner. So I felt kind of bad just choosing Chile. So what I thought I'd do is I'll do Malaysia this next month coming up. So July is going to be Malaysia. So if you want to see what I create for Malaysia, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see the progress. And I thought the vote that I put out now will actually be for the month of August. So do stick around for just another minute and I will tell you the three options for our August country. I hope you enjoyed watching that Chilean adventure guys and setting up the journal for ready for June. I am looking forward to using it and I am even more looking forward to choosing another country to explore. So I will be doing Malaysia next month as mentioned and I can't wait to look into Malaysia. I think it'll be a really good contrast to what we just visited in Chile. 
And so now let's make the choices from our three jars, which are just sitting right here. Um, and we will, yeah, see what countries we can come out with for the month of August. So let's get choosing. Okay, so starting with our first jar, which is full of countries that are above 30 million in population. So things are hand in and I'm not looking, I'm swiveling them around. First one is Kenya. Oh, that would be cool. We haven't been to Africa much, so that would be very cool to investigate. And I do love African animals and I'm desperate to go to like a national park, just be plopped into a national park somewhere there and see if I can survive in the wild with the beautiful animals. <laughs> Unlikely. Uh, this next one's are between 8 million and 30 million in population. So swiveling that around and I have one and it is Ecuador. <laughs> I feel like that might be close to where Chile is, but I really don't know. That shows you how, how hard geography is. <laughs> so Ecuador would be cool because I have nothing. I know nothing about Ecuador. And the last one from the little baby countries, these are populations beneath 8 million. So let's choose the last one. Um, got one and we have Denmark. I have family in Denmark. <laughs> that would be cool. I know a little bit about it, but I can always learn more for sure. And I have been to Denmark, so I have a little bit of fondness there. Um, so yeah, so if you wanna see me explore Denmark, then please let me know in the comments down below. So we have our choices. We have Kenya, we have Ecuador and Denmark. So let me know which one you want to see for the month of August. And thank you so much for watching and for being here. And I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>